Good morning. It's Pastor Jim. Our scripture this morning comes to us from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Paul writes, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above all names, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friends, this is the word of God. For us, the people of God, thanks be to God. So while Paul was imprisoned in Rome, he wrote this letter to the church in Philippi, thanking them for their support and to offer them some advice and encouragement. Now, it's widely held that the congregation may have been having some issues. Now, we don't know specifically what the problems were, but by his tone, it must not have been too serious. The best we can do is speculate. Otherwise, Paul would have mentioned the details. So even in the earliest churches, there were disagreements and people who were unhappy with something or someone here and there. Isn't that comforting to know? Well, Paul tells the folks at Philippi that whenever they face troubled times of any sort, they should first put their minds and hearts to being of the same spirit and love that was in Jesus. Now, as I prepared for this morning, <clears throat> Excuse me. My mind wandered to our Methodist communion liturgy, which, and particularly the part that says, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. So with that language in our minds, Paul says, let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Paul wanted these new Christians to understand that his instructions were based on a solid relationship with Christ. Hear those instructions again. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Paul's point is that unity born out of humility defines us by who we grow close to in grace rather than who we alienate by our judgment. This attitude identifies us by who we serve rather than those who might serve us. And this uh, attitude identifies us by how we act with that common heart, mind, and spirit. Paul invites us to find in ourselves what was modeled in the mission of Christ. 
Paul says that we are to learn from the character of Jesus. His example was to humble himself before others. And the key to this program, if you will, is humility. Paul says that Christian humility is the best way to achieve unity both within the body of Christ and also in the service and ministry to our neighbors. Forming ourselves in the same mind and love as Christ can only be achieved by intentionally letting go of our own pride. We have to put aside our ambitions and our differences, and we have to humbly see others as better than ourselves. We simply have to focus on the needs of others. As easy as this sounds, this is perhaps the most difficult challenge that we face in the church today. Can we use these words from Paul to chart the church's path forward? Paul is telling these Philippians that their service to their neighbors is evidence of God's work in their lives. If we look at history, we see a pattern of service, one person serving another, but also groups of people serving the entire community. So we have proof that it's in our DNA as believers. And Paul says that we are already doing good work because we have traditionally in the church been of one mind when it comes to our mission. We need to celebrate the gifts and graces that have sustained us and we need to remember that our tradition of looking after the community. This tradition of looking after one another is what lasts, not the bricks and mortar of the church. It is the mind, heart, and spirit of the body that stands over time. Paul encourages us to empty ourselves, just as Jesus did, for the good of the congregation and also for the good of the community. Let's be honest here. Humility is much easier to recognize than it is to put into practice. Then Paul says that each of us has to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you. It's evident that God has been at work in mankind since the beginning of time. And it's God's work in us individually that has brought us to where we are today. And it's also God's work in us as a body that has allowed us to become effective in ministry throughout the world. So we are blessed as individuals and as a church body. And it's our recognition of that blessing that fuels our desire to grow spiritually and to please God with our activity. Sometimes the image of God on a throne is hard for us to comprehend. So to put it mildly or bluntly or uh, realistically, Jesus came to earth and put on the skin and bones that define who we are as humans. And he walked among us to help us to see the face of God. So Paul writes, in being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Can you imagine that God loves us so much that he would not only take on the flesh of humanity, but submit to dying on the cross between two criminals just so we can live. Our passage ends with a very powerful statement. 
Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, as followers of Jesus, this model of humility calls us together at the foot of the cross. His statement that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in us. If we claim a life in the unity and humility found through Christ, then we recognize God to be at work in our life. It is the working out, the living out of our own salvation, complete with the fear and trembling. It is that that determines how and to what extent we will be changed. It's scary to do what's right sometimes. People will always question what we do and even criticize us. And sometimes that fear and trembling will cause us to do the uncomfortable thing or to go to the uncomfortable place. But if God is working through us, we work in complete partnership with God. We step out as living witnesses of God's grace. We are called to move out of our human comfort into God's power to do good works in the name of Jesus. It is the notion that says being a believer is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. We know we are doing God's work when we listen to a hurting friend and offer them words of grace and comfort. We find God's voice in a conversation when we reach out to people different than ourselves, welcoming them as part of God's family. It is God at work in each of you, enabling you to will and to work toward pleasing God. In an act of ultimate humility, Christ came from heaven to show us the way to God and the way of God. You know, we've always asked how we can know God's will for our lives. Well, what Paul tells us is that we find God's will when we humble ourselves and allow God to work in us and through us. God wants to be at work through you and through all of us together as a family of faith. The, West, the question then becomes, are we going to be willing participants in God's will for us? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Be blessed and we hope to see you next week.